Whew, that was it. Another week done and dusted. Looking forward to four days at home. That's going to be very, very cool. Starting tomorrow, hopefully, with a new installment of the Das Studio series. It's my plan for tomorrow. Julia is having a job somewhere in, I don't know, far away, so she has to go. So that means I can have the office and record some stuff. So that's, that's, good. that's good news. That was, that's the plan for tomorrow. Um, I've had a bit of a long day, interestingly, and it felt, it felt good. It's just much longer than, than the days that I usually have. So Julia is currently having some physiotherapy treatment for her left shoulder. That's something that the orthopedist recommended or prescribed rather three times a week and she decided that that was going to be a little bit much for her so she was going to go two days a week and that's what we're doing right now it's on alton road it's uh, not alton road sorry on lincoln road and that's a big kind of shopping road here in miami beach that we have and downstairs it's a beautiful kind of art deco building they're very nice uh, building at the bottom there's a starbucks so i come with her she goes up to the treatment and i go sit downstairs and play with my new ipad and an external keyboard like the regular mac keyboard the old mac keyboard that i used to use on my desk so i take those two things together it's a very sleek portable setup for writing it's very nice even without the ipad i could attach that keyboard to my iphone and then do some writing that way also very nice i think i might try that in the future also a very cool idea and story is the program that i use for writing is compatible with both the ipad the iphone and the mac so on days that i'm i fancy i'm going to take my mac on days i don't i take my ipad and on days i don't fancy taking anything i'll just take the keyboard so it's a very exciting setup there so the appointment was this morning at 9 and my shift started at 12 at the supermarket so I, um, I'm basically up and about and around since well I'm up since kind of 6.37 and then we went there uh, from about uh, 8.30 something like that and I've been out and about ever since so that's usually usually my days are much shorter is what I'm trying to say and it wasn't so bad but now I feel a little exhausted and I can't wait to get home particularly because I want to try that new game a little bit more in depth uh, Manifold Garden William Cher's amazing puzzle game that defies gravity and reality and geometry and it's, it's very it's very exciting I might even start streaming a little bit of that it's my first playthrough I haven't I haven't really I haven't played much of it, maybe just half an hour, maybe an hour, and it's fascinating. It really messes with your brain, and it's kind of puzzles that you have to solve. And the minimalist soundtrack, very nice, very nice. So yes, that was my day. I started uh, at Starbucks with an idea. Of course, I always have ideas, and it's one that I wanted to discuss with you, or just mention that this is something I'm getting more serious about, or let's just say my brain is getting more serious about it as time progresses and it's something that I've been meaning to do for a while and uh, it's it's almost like I'm, I'm just being subtly reminded that on top of so many other things that I've got going this is something that I, I guess my brain is really passionate about otherwise this wouldn't come up time and time again and it's about interviews so my original plan with writing the book with writing Broken Bowels was always that I wanted to provide some interviews with my doctors not so much interviews as in you know grilling somebody it's more about sharing a moment you know sharing a half hour 45 minutes together and just having a chat really and whatever we talk about we talk about and that's that's kind of an interview style i'd like to try it's a bit gonzo of course like everything that i do is gonzo it's not mapped out and scripted and prepared but it has that natural kind of spark to it and these people they're just fascinating so dr kuznir dr casso dr zomstein uh, my nutritionist julie rothenberg uh, emma goldberg as well those people I, I had always envisioned to meet up with and and have a chat with and i have the equipment 
what I haven't got is experience in doing that in making the setup, doing the setup, and just letting the cameras roll and then hoping things are going to come out because I'm more used to being at the other end of the camera and making sure it looks good but I'm not used to being in front of the camera and making sure things are good on the back end because that's difficult to set up so I don't I don't have any experience with that kind of setup but technically I have most of the equipment and I'd like to make it happen and one of the things that makes this possible of course is first of all that they're all very gentle people who are happy to experiment this with me that's very nice but uh, also the, the the aspect of course that we're all in the same place we're all in, in and around Miami and we can meet up and make this happen so all the doctors that I've spoken to they're very happy of, of doing that they said essentially the same thing make an appointment and sure we'll go and do this and I'm thinking wow is it really could it really be that easy that's that's something I had never expected usually oh, we have the big media department and we have to go through and clear it with 50 million people all of them will, will say no and it's not actually how it works I just if you go to the person directly they so they say yes of course I'm happy to talk to you also I mean, it's not a big corporation it's hey it's Jay and his YouTube channel cool of course big case for everyone so yeah let's let's do it let's do this so that's those are the people I want to talk to I always wanted to talk to originally and also as a, as a good reminder you know I don't want to forget that these people have at one part at, at one point been part of my life and they still are part of my life next year I'm going into this new bracket of the people who have exceeded the three-year survival rate that'll be exciting so that'll be a great memento and a great commemoration is that the word I'm looking for to make these interviews happen and make them you know make them happen make them public and share it with with the world really but there are so many other What's the word? Inspiring people. These, th I think that's the that's the word I'm looking for. These are all inspiring, very inspiring people to me, and I want to share what we have with everyone. And there are the the thing is though, there are many, many more inspiring people on the planet, and I know of many. I don't know them personally at this point, but I would love it if I could set up interviews like that with those people and obviously that is prohibitively expensive schedule wise very difficult to to make happen just because i don't have the time and the resources to go and fly to chicago or to fly to la or fly to to the netherlands or whatever it's just you know it's just not feasible to do that uh, yes at the moment so maybe at one point that could be part of the setup but right now my brain kept thinking about how can we make that within the limitations of what we have and what springs to mind is of course remote interviews many people are doing it especially for podcasts where you don't even have to meet up you just go and set a date do a Skype call and one party records it next thing you have a podcast episode that's that's easy to do and I want to do this with video so uh, that presents a slightly additional challenge but again it's not actually that super difficult to do oh, I can't go through here can I good so yes it's not actually that difficult to do it's just that the setup needs to be thought through a little bit so what I'm envisioning there is to just phone somebody voice over IP and have that chat between two people and so that that looks good I would say we also have at least three cameras which is also very doable one shot of me one shot of the other person and then we have one that is me and my desk from from behind showing the other person on the monitor so that'll work and there's even another one like a fourth shot that I can use to cut away to to uh, a combination of the, of the both of us on the same screen with some kind of a strap tagline you know what the what the news stations always do when there's one party live somewhere and there's one the, the anchor in the studio and there's some kind of moving background and all that so all that is, is is possible to do and it's not actually that that difficult to make happen in fact remote interviews are probably once the 
initial setup is there, are probably easier to organize than physical interviews. Because also then the aspect is that I can actually st cut the sources live with my Stream Deck. So that makes it much easier than to record three cameras and then having to go into the post and then having to re-edit this, uh, like at least re-switch the cameras. But, you know, uh, the point is I really want to do this. And uh, the other influential people that I'm thinking of are people like, well, there's, there's, there's just... There's just so many, I don't have to look that far. In, in my own remote circle of friends, there's Rod, there's Brian, and there is uh, William Chur, who's just released that, uh, that Manifold Garden game. There's Bear Taffy, there's literally, there's uh, friends from London that are very uh, close to me still, that are very inspirational to me. And I, I wanna, I think this is a good new project that I could, that I could start. And once I've worked out how to do this whole switching thing that somebody gets a live signal from me that I can also record and I can also record that from them, I guess it's all not entirely sure how I'm going to do that, but I'm sure the technology is there. So I think that's not, that's not going to be a, a big stumbling block. I'm, I'm kind of, I, I think I can work technology out to a certain extent. And I think what attracts me to all those people is that they're all creatives. They're all doing their thing. They're, they're creative and they've been creative for many, many years. And it's not about how successful you are with your creativity. It's more like how, how do you organize yourself around that? Uh, how do you spend five to seven to 10 years on one project and you pour all kinds of resources into it and it doesn't matter if it's ultimately successful and leads you to some other plane of of life it's not about that it's it's about the creatives it's not about what they do i think that's what i'm trying to say it's not about what they do it's about how they do it like you know a streamer just gets started in five years time he might be a good uh, he might be an internet sensation he might not be he might start working as an accountant at one point it's an interesting it's an interesting thing but he kept doing it because that's what he felt was was right you know William Cheer, interesting interesting inspiring story was an artist did installations with inflatable balloons uh, felt that installations are a nightmare to organize and they're usually very limited in regards to the space that you can put in there now thinks hey maybe i'll go into unity and i don't have those space limitations anymore build the art installation that i've always dreamed of how am i going to do that so that people will go look into this well i'll build a video game around it awesome idea took him seven years though so it's you know that that sort of thing how do you how do you spend how, what do you do with your day-to-day -day life? You know, how do you hang in there? Long project. Rod's been doing the girls from TNA 10 years. And for him, it's not about the numbers. You know, it's not, it's not about how much money am I going to make with that. It's that, yeah, that would be a nice side effect. But from the bottom of his heart, he feels he has to do this. This is, this is he's, he's a creative, he's a creator. He needs to do this. And those are the aspects that I find interesting, how they do it. Not so much, oh, roads cordoned off, how interesting. Oh, a bit of tree work going on there. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so it's not about what they do particularly. That could be anything, anything in the creative space. It's how they are around that and how they do that. And that is what I'd like to explore. So yes, and that's something that my brain just keeps coming up with. And I, th I think I need to do this. I think I need to do this. It's another one of those things that I have to do. And luckily, this is an idea that is actually within my, within my means. I think I can convince people to do it. I think I can technically kind of pull it off and it'll be interesting to just chat with them. Yes, that's a, another one of my many, many ideas I wanted to share with you today.